Palais, Palais, Palais by Sat. Look some good news. Hold on. Palais? Yes, that's right. Boy, Sat has something called. Hold on. Pale, pale, pale. Look, talk. Sat is having a special for this independent season, and you need to get connected to enjoy the benefits. It's called Pale, 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 Pale. Once you set up and connected with Sat, you can talk to your mother, grandmother, great grandmother, stepmother, stepbrother, stepsister, step the whole step. Pale is so sweet. With your connection to Sat Telecoms, and especially when you get your internet connection, no hidden fees, no hidden charges. You get free SAT to SAT telephone connection. You also get free installation and you get no charges on your talk time. And you get your telephone for free. You don't hear Pale, I do. So you have at home your TV, SAT TV. You have your internet, SAT internet. And now, phone, phone, look at Pale, 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 Pale. All your talk is sweet. Hello, hello. Take advantage of one of SAT's five internet packages in our Pale Pale specials. You can get the Breezy, the Warm Up, the Maverick, the Jetstream, and the Warp Drive. Don't forget the Pale Pale. These packages starting at $28.75. Pale Pale, yeah, don't forget from SAT. This independent season, don't forget, it's happening at SAT. Pale Pale. Festival, c'est magé, magé. Good boy, magé, magé. Mais SAT, c'est Pale Pale. Yep, Pale Pale. Yeah. Good evening, I'm your presenter Nisha Charles. Thank you for joining me for SAT TV News. Among the major developments, Grotto Home receives a much needed donation. Bahamas cleans up after Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy closes in on US East Coast. And in sports, Kimar Roach says positive vibe lingering from the West Indies triumph at the ICC World 2020 tournament. Details of these and other stories after the break. Thank you for staying with me. Now for the details of the news. As part of this year's independent celebrations, Dexia hosted its annual Market Day with a Difference at the Rosa Market. The Rosa Market is the place where farmers and customers meet to exchange money and food. At Dexia, they are always seeking to improve the quality of produce for everyone involved. In the near future, Dominic can look forward to upgrades at the market with regards to the quality of service and produce that are provided. Honorable Norris Prevo, parliamentary representative for the Roseau Central constituency, says he knows the problems the vendors are facing in bringing their produce to the market and he is for any chance that would assist them. It was in 2010 when I addressed the vendors here. I implored government to raise up the vending profession, to make vending a matter of national pride, to make the facilities for vendors a national priority. At that time, I called for the covering of the facilities outside for the vendors among other states. I'm hoping that today we will hear an outstanding copy from the Minister of Trade, from the Prime Minister, that indeed we are about to see the commencement of the covering of the outside section of the Rosal Market. Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Senator Alvin Bernard, says that government recognizes that there are a number of challenges affecting agriculture, including black cigatoga and citrus greening. They continue to provide support in physical infrastructure, access to financing and policy implementation. The Dominican Export Import Agency, Bexia, will soon commence the operation of two more people starting housing in Roseau and Possum. These will be managed based on the requirements of the Fresh Produce Quality Control and Inspection Act. Acting Prime Minister Honorable Abruz George says all Dominicans should join forces to help develop our agriculture industry. He says we need to sustain this area to create jobs for those who have none. With the help of the Almighty, we will face every challenge with all the energy that we possess. We are prepared to provide 
inside the leadership a political commitment to move ahead. But moving ahead requires the collective energies of everyone. We have demonstrated that we are capable of providing effective leadership by taking the tough decisions to create a platform for further progress and development of this country. The opening ceremony saw cultural performances from the St. Luke's Primary School and a mini concert in Creole. One family is now homeless following a fire which occurred on Saturday, 27th of October 2012. At about 6 a.m. that day, a fire completely destroyed two wooden dwelling houses of Fitzroy Philip and Angela Dechus, which were within close proximity on Glover Lane in Roseau. However, no one was injured during the fire. Foul play is suspected and one woman is presently in custody and is assisting with the investigations. Unconfirmed reports from eyewitnesses indicate that Philip's girlfriend, whom he has a child with, started the fire. This fire is currently being investigated as arson. In more news, 34-year-old Stephen Hill of Layu is presently missing a gunshot wound to his abdomen after being shot by Gifford Charles, proprietor of Charles Minimat on Independence Street in Roseau. The incident occurred at 11.30 a.m. on October 28, 2012. It was reported that Stephen was involved in an altercation with some employees and began throwing stones and bottles into the business place, then armed himself with a cutlass when he was shot. Speaking with Mr. Charles, the proprietor of Charles Minimat says even after cautioning Mr. Hill that he would injure him when he came to attack his employee, he paid no attention. Mr. Charles informed Mr. Hill that he has a gun in his attempt for him to rethink his decision. But when he ignored and lunged forward to swing the cutlass at the employee was when he was shot. The matter is under investigations. And in related news, on Sunday the 20th of October, 30-year-old Herbert Donald Dutcherville of Font de France Martinique, who was visiting the island for the World Creole Music Festival, drowned at Tito Gorge while he was having a bath at that location. It was reported that Herbert swam into the gorge and submerged for an extended period of time and did not emerge. The taxi operator who was present went to seek assistance from the villagers and upon arrival discovered the lifeless body under the water. The body was transported to the Princess Margaret Hospital Accident and Emergency Department where it was pronounced dead by a medical practitioner. A coroner's inquest will be convened to be followed by a post-mortem examination to determine the cause of death. Flower pay is not suspected. On Friday, October 26, the World Choral Music Festival was truly a night to remember as it was dedicated to the memory of the late Kadas legend Jeff Joseph. The night featured a number of artists from various genres of music such as Thierry Martley, Asa Bandan, Zouk All-Stars and Stefan Ravel. Other performances came from musicians such as Luke Leandre, Zouk Machines, Disip Gazman, Tanya Senval and the WCK Band. Haitian musician Disip Gazman who came on stage with a t-shirt in tribute to Jeff Joe in addition to signing some of his songs says that Jeff Joe was his icon which he derived a lot of inspiration from throughout his musical career. Inspired you? Big time, big time because you know, when you talk about songs like Sukuya, uh, Mide Ba, a One, Two, Three, everybody must go to heaven. And I mean, this guy, I mean, also he done so much collaboration in talking about with uh, When I Say Yes, You Say No. Those are hit songs. And also, music like he has, he has so much so, so much music the last time i watched him in a collaboration with a group a song named oops that's 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 the joke you know also he has a song that's called by no by by no by those are his songs so i admire him so much Gasman added that Jeff's music has helped to bring people from haiti martinique and guadeloupe together in addition to other countries this is Gadman did well for the crowd as he kept them dancing to a mixture of Zouk, Kanas and Kompa music. The bands performed both on Friday and Saturday night. <laughs>
the night switch to Buyo when Grand Bay resident Asa Bantan took the stage performing a number of his popular songs which kept the crowd's vocal cords in overdrive, singing along to each of his songs. One of the highlights of his performance was singing a song he wrote in tribute to the memory of the late Jeff Joe, which touched many patrons' hearts as Asa sang it so passionately. <laughs> you know because on the stories I make my music based on real life stories of things I want to happen or things that should happen if something goes wrong or if something happened in the country then yes I'm the type of guy that could take a story and make it into a, a music a big hit Miss St. Vassel, she loves performing at the World Korean Music Festival, which is a good way for uniting the Caribbean and more festivals like this one should be done. She also reminisced some of her past memories of Jeff Joe, which contributed to her music career. Uh, Jeff was my grandbrother. He used to come in my mommy's house. Uh, I saw him, I was uh, about eight years old. Then now 40 years I know him. And it was very hard when I... Uh, when I uh, heard about his death, it was very hard for me. She said Jeff was unique as he created a new style of music which is native to Dominica and this is an icon that we can and should never forget. She gets her inspiration for writing songs on everyday life experiences where there is a never-ending supply of situations. After 26 years of Zook Machine, she is currently working on her solo album. Some other performers for the night were Luke Leandri and Stefan Ravel, who kept the crowd dancing and singing along. Switching back to the Buyo genre, the pioneers of Buyo music, the Big Bad WCK band, gave the crowd a performance they would never forget, including King Dice and Claudette Peters, as they brought Friday night's event to a close at 6.30 a.m. on Saturday. The WCK fans were certainly not disappointed as the band displayed their versatility, performing a number of their old and new school songs like Hold Them, We Don't Want It, We Don't Want No Tie, and I In That. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
In more news, the management, staff and residents of the Grotto Home for the Homeless were all smiles on the morning of Monday, October 29th, as they were the recipients of a much-needed donation. This donation, which included foodstuff, medication and other items, was a kind gesture of the United States-based Dominican Mr. Yabinda Ambrose and his soon-to-be wife, Miss Cassandra Carrington. Mr. Ambrose says the idea for the donation came about after he purchased his plane ticket to fly to Dominica for a month's visit. He said he did not want to come back to his country and feel like he did not do anything, so he hatched a plane to fill a barrel with supplies for the Grotto Home for the Homeless so he could give back. This is my country. I love it very much, you know, to my heart. And um, I have a lot of family here, of course, and um, I figured they're well off already. I could get them stuff, you know. I am not rich in America. I have money, I'm broke. Okay? And I figured, you know what? Best I could do is try something. Even if I make an effort, make a try, you know, I, the, the smallest thing I get, it would, it would matter to me. You know, it would, it would, you know, I'll be grateful for that. I end up getting this barrel filled from friends, families, neighbors, you know, just by donating, co-workers, you know, people dropping off um, boxes of stuff on my porch while I'm at work, coming home and, you know, with a smile on my face when I walk on my porch and see the food that, I, you know, people have just dropped off, you know. It started with just one box and he received a lot of support from co-workers and friends and family, which evolved to a barrel of items. He is grateful for the contribution and thanks all who made this possible for him. He said he certainly will repeat this venture for a worthy cause. Miss Carrington was very happy to be a part of this worthy cause, which is something that she always wanted to do. She was pleased with the teamwork between herself and Mr. Ambrose, in addition to family and friends for making this possible. And the power of the internet, social networking, we you know, definitely made it happen. So definitely very proud to be a part of this. And as ben Yabinda said, definitely look forward to doing this again. Public Relations Officer of the Grotto Home, Mr. Parry Bellot, says this donation came at a perfect time as the needs of the Grotto need to be addressed in all ways possible. And let me take this opportunity to thank so many Dominicans who continue to assist donations in cash and in kind. As you may know, for those who don't know, we are of course involved in this major project to build this new facility because those who have toured here know that it's kind of cramped here. In fact, this was always a temporary um, building for use. We really need to move to our new, our new place, um, but it's going to take a little while to raise the funds. But with people like over here and, and so many others, we have individuals, we have our corporate citizens, and of course we have the government that continue to assist. We're very grateful for that. And hopefully, within a year or two, we may have this new facility costing, would you believe, close to five million EC dollars, you know, it's quite a bit. But we've already got the land through government and so on. We actually started, thanks to a lot of work by Tina herself, in getting some religious groups involved and so on. And I'm sure we'll continue to get their assistance. Secretary of the Grotto Home, Ms. Tina Alexander, says she was excited when she received the initial emails from Ms. Carrington about the idea which finally came to a reality today. Ms. Alexander added the items would be put to good use. And in more news, the People's Pentecostal Church dedicated their newly renovated facility at a praise festival on Sunday, October 28th. Present at the festival was the acting Prime Minister Honorable Ambrose George and his wife. Mr. Bernard Etinoff, member of the People's Pentecostal Church, says it was about 22 months ago that the pastor Bishop Michael Daniel went out in an act of faith to begin the planning phase of repairs that needed to be made to the building. By November 2011, with just over $103,000, in the project fund account, we studied works and quickly realized that it was going to cost a lot more than the initial estimates. Again, Evangelist Peter R. Augustine, chairman of the project committee, the building committee, together with our dear pastor, the visionary behind this project, decided to approach the government of Dominica for assistance. The government of Dominica decided to help with the renovations by approving $150,000 towards the cause. They soon realized that with every change came an additional cost. This, these changes included inter alia, the leveling and tiling of the floor, the change of design of the ceiling and the air conditioning, and the remodeling of the technical booth and the re redesign of the platform area where we are now. 
contracts were initially awarded to three members of the church, namely Brother Timothy Pascal to undertake electrical works, Brother Pina Joseph for the air conditioning works, Brother Caesar Katin for painting. The acting Prime Minister, Honorable Ambrose George, says the Prime Minister would have been proud of the work that has been carried out from the contributions made for the new facility. The church continues to play a very important role in our society. And this is something which, from days immemorial, that every church does play a role in our society, in the life of our people. And the People's Pentecostal Family Church is no exception. Right? He says this church has been playing its part in molding the lives of those in the communities that it serves and the importance of having God as part of our lives. He hopes that the People's Pentecostal Church will continue to touch people's lives, especially now with the newly renovated church. The congregation gave thanks in song and dance. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights.